Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about this Vitsport filament joiner that I got off of Amazon and how I used it to create this using this with these. So stay tuned. This is going to be fun. So I've been using this little gadget for a while. Uh, a couple weeks now and I have been loving it it's not super fast you know it is a little fiddly as you'd expect joining filament together but it's surprisingly effective and surprisingly easy to use so um it comes with a little pouch and a pair of nippers I'm just using my standard blue nippers it comes with some sandpaper a piece of PTFE tube the device and a power supply power supply has a built-in switch that you use to turn the unit on and off it is basically a heating element. So what it's made for is, well, what I'm using it for is all those little bits that you have left over when you're done printing. This is the little bits that are, you know, in the Bowden tube or didn't quite make it into the printer. Be careful using the pieces in the Bowden tube. We'll get more into that later, unless you use it right away. But um, samples, stuff like that, or you want to continue from one roll to another, this machine will let you do that. So the way this works is. Well, first of all, let's look over the device. This thing's pretty cool. I actually used joined together filament to make this. So that is that's that's from cooling. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five different pieces of filament combined together to allow me to print this whole thing. <laughs> so the little machine is kind of neat. Uh, basically, two heating elements into a chamber here uh, this looks like a, a standard clip you, I'm pretty sure you could buy these clips combined with 3d printing so this 3d printed cover to guide the wires out to the strain relief and the switch standard plug which means I should be able to run this off DC which is pretty cool a uh, little 3d printed foot you know, allows it to stand up which is nice um, this is also 3d printed but I think it's a ceramic resin. So I think it's a resin, and then um, I think they, I don't know if you get rid of the resin or keep the resin, but I think it's ceramic based, so it can handle the heat. And so far, no issue. Inside here, if you look, and it's the same on the top side and the bottom side, you have a channel that very tightly fits the filament, and then you have this piece of metal here. That is what the heating element attaches to. So that is your hot zone same thing on this side the clamp is actually really strong um, so let's go over a couple of things first the way this works is that is a melt zone you put a piece of filament in one end and a piece of filament in the other end they touch in the middle in the melt zone they melt together and join you let it cool down then you remove it it comes out almost ready to go there's sometimes a little bit of flashing, which is actually good because that gives you a good strong bond. And then once you um, clean up the flashing, you either what I do is I typically use a knife. By the way, I got a new microphone too, so let me know if the audio is better. I'm hoping it's better. So I got a, a new little microphone. So I got the red rose one because it was four dollars cheaper than all the other colors. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's four bucks cheaper? I don't care. I wanted the blue one, but hell, I'll take four dollars cheaper. Um, I use my little knife, scrape the flashing off. If you need to do more, it comes with sandpaper. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of the sandpaper. One piece is probably going to last you for dozens and dozens of uses as long as you don't use it. Fold it in half, give it a little scraping, clean up the joint, and you're good to go. I've had zero problems feeding the filament. Um, there are some issues. I'll go over them, but those are mechanical issues that have to do with what you're doing here so first thing preparation you need to make sure the filament isn't already brittle so you're probably not going to want to use any part of the filament that has already passed the feeder gear the drive gear on your feeder where it grips the filament with the metal drive gear because you're compromising the filament at that point now this probably won't affect something like abs or asa maybe not uh, but it will definitely affect pla depending on your environment, yawning again, and it will definitely affect PETG. So you may need to dry it before you use it again. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to make sure the end of the filament is good. 
So you're going to want to give it a bend test. Make sure the filament actually bends and doesn't snap. Now, of course, I just compromised that little section of filament, so we're going to cut it off. It did not snap on me, so I know we're good to go. So the way I do this is I open this up. I try to do a minimum amount of straightening on the filament. I just want to straighten that last inch, no more because you don't want to straighten any part of the filament that you're not going to be heating. Because when you heat it, you're basically drying it, which should help it to last longer. If you straighten all the way back here, that part's just going to, it's going to break on you. It's going to become brittle. That's the way PLA works. PLA is not as hygroscopic as other filaments because it has a skin. When you start cracking that skin, you allow the intrusion of water, and it becomes brittle. That's not the fault of the device. That's the nature of plastic. So... We are going to stick that in there so it's in the melt zone just like that and then what i like to do and of course i already misplaced it <laughs> i'll use a pen for now but keep a sharpie seriously now i'm turning the camera all over the place trying to get a pen um keep a sharpie handy and what i do is i mark the filament right here put a line on the filament or you could put a piece of tape on there if you want the reason that's important is that you need to be able to tell when this filament moves because when you push the other half of the I, I don't know I just had the sharpie marker I don't know what I did with it I had a little sharpie but you want to mark the filament here so that when this moves when you push the other piece in you'll know uh, you, in theory, you can mount both halves in, but I find that to be extremely difficult to do. Um, I had a hard time putting both pieces in. It's easier just to push this piece in from the end until it touches the middle. All right, now both pieces of filament are in. You notice I'm not bending it, I'm not tweaking it. Now we turn it on and let it heat up. It takes about two minutes. Now, when you first put the filament in, uh, get a good feel for it so if you touch the ends here you can see how this filament's really stiff how it just wants to bounce around see get an idea of how that feels see how that it just flicks around it, it's like a like you're strumming a string right it's very stiff that's going to change as it heats up that's how you know you're getting close to your melt this will suddenly become very floppy Um, you're supposed to run this for no more than five minutes at a time. I'm guessing there's not a lot, a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of temperature control on this, so it runs up to around 220 Celsius. You'll know when you're getting close to that because this will suddenly become very easy to move. We are still pretty stiff, so we're not there yet. And the reason you want to put a line here so that if you push and you move the joint out of the heat zone you'll know because your little mark will move and you'll know to push the mark back to make sure the joint between the two plastics is in the melt zone we're gonna do this in real time okay we are not getting loose yet we are heating up it's getting warm it takes about two two and a half minutes before it gets there So I use this on my WeDo with the E3D um, CHT 1.4 millimeter nozzle, and I printed this in vase mode, and that is the four colors that I just happen to have pieces of. You see it prints great, I had no issues with the transition. I was actually seriously pleased with how well it worked. Still stiff, still stiff, so we have not melted yet. You'll know right away, as soon as you grab this and start moving it, you'll know right away when you've reached that point where it's melting because it becomes very obvious. This goes from, you know, thrumming like this to wet noodle. <laughs> like it just like, woo! You think it's going to yank right out. It's not. It just became soft because it's starting to reach the deflection temperature 
inside there and the center reaches a melting temperature. Now there are some caveats. You cannot join dissimilar plastics. I'm pretty yeah, these two are PLA, so we should be okay. This might be a PLA plus. If this is a PLA plus, this joint will fail. But I think I think this is a regular PLA, I think. Ooh, we're start oh there we go. We're starting to get soft now. Now it's it, this this is starting to move like it's on a hinge. And you'll probably actually see it push up because these pieces of plastic are trying to push it up. So let's get them loose because we don't want to distend the plastic too much. Yeah, we're starting to get soft now. Once it gets soft, 30 seconds. That's what I do. Once it's totally soft, once it starts wiggling like a wet noodle, then I go 30 seconds. You cannot join dissimilar materials. So for example, I tried PLA, works great. PLA Plus, works great. Pet G works great um asa works great and um although it takes longer because you really need to make sure you get that melt and oh there we go you just saw that flick there oh yeah we're nice and loose now there and we are pretty loose there too oh yeah we're super loose now <laughs> i'm actually going to bring this up over here like that yeah so this this might be a pla plus this is not getting as soft as the green so this joint might fail. I also tried um, carbon-filled polycarbonate. That worked fine. The only common plastic I haven't tried yet is nylon. I haven't tried nylon, but I have no reason to believe it won't work. So PC plastics, um, PETG plastics, ABS plastics, ASA plastics. ABS and ASA take quite a bit longer, so does the polycarbonate. you got to really make sure it heats up good. Um, but you cannot join dissimilar plastics. So you can't join PLA to ABS or PETG to ASA, and you also can't join PLA to PLA plus. Um, I also haven't tried silk. Silk might be tricky because silk likes to contract under tension when it heats up to melting point. So silk might not work. This is super loose. This is not super loose. It's loose, but not super loose. So I suspect that this is um, I was able to push it in more, so it might just be that I didn't have it in far enough. Okay. We're going to let that cook for a bit. Um, this might be a PLA+, plus, in which case it's not going to bond well with this. What happens is it, it looks like it's fine, it looks like it melted together, looks perfect, but you so much as touch it, and it doesn't break. The two pieces just separate. Like they were never actually adhered. They don't melt together. And um, I suspect this is a PLA+. Plus. I wasn't sure, but I didn't want to join two green pieces. I wanted to join you know, one green and one some other color. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a shot. I'm going to turn it off. When you turn it off, try to get the parts straight like this. Try to get them nice and straight. So do whatever you need to do with this to try to keep it from bending. And um, when when this stops being floppy, see how this is super floppy and it doesn't want to bounce back? It just wants to stay wherever it gets put because this is all melted now. Um, when it stops being floppy, give it about another minute. You really do need to let it completely cool down. If you try to pull it out early, you're going to stretch and distort the joint. You probably won't break the joint, but you're going to mess up the joint. You won't have that clean, consistent diameter to feed through the printer. And you don't want to have to be straightening it because you're going to compromise the surface. So let it cool down. What um, I'm probably going to end up doing is get one of those little 5-inch desktop fans and have a 3D print hook on the front of the fan and hang this right up on the hook. So the air can blow through this to cool it down when I'm done the joint. Ah, this got floppy. Okay, we might be okay. This got floppy. So 
So maybe they did join. There we go. That looks pretty straight. You see I'm setting them up on top of to make sure they come out straight and not come out bent. Because you don't want it coming out bent because you'll end up with this wonky Z-bend. You want it to be pretty straight. Um, put it in front of a fan, blow on it, or just wait. Just go to the bathroom or something like that. Um, this is also great for samples, like if you get the alien box or the um, the um, the one from Printed Solid. Um, I forget what the name of it is, but you know if you get the if you get samples, this is handy. Uh, you have the little bit left over on the roll when you're done your print. You know, you, you you do the print and you got that little bit left over and it's not quite enough to do another model. Well. Just carefully remove it from the roll and join it with something else. Join it with the same color. Join it with a different color. Uh, cut up a couple rolls of film and experiment with making your own color change filament. It'll be a hard color change. It's not going to be a smooth color change, but it's still, it's still kind of cool. <laughs> so you can make funky parts that just look cool. So this is a functional part for me. And I even made a cap for it. I'll use this one here to hold my AAA nickel metal hydride batteries. And... I modeled up my own little minimum diameter cap. That's an ASA cap um, for it. So I have a little container to hold my um, my AAA batteries. But I'm super pleased with the color change. I like it. And it means I get to use up all that, all those little bits of filament. Yeah, that is still way too loose to even think about moving yet. I'm going to unplug it just so I can move it around a little easier. So I can give you guys a better view. You don't have to unplug it. It's got a switch. But I want to you know, be able to move it around underneath the camera. Very well made. I'm very surprised. You know, it's a this is what I call semi-custom made. So he's modifying an existing... Um, product this clamp and he's adding 3d printed parts to make this finished product and i'm blown away i would love to see the process he used to make this um i'm as fascinated by the process he might use to make this as i am of this product itself um it's 53 bucks on amazon so if you make yourself you know two or three rolls of filament out of this you just pay for itself <laughs> it's pretty cool you know one neat project where you use the color changing for some fun you know that pays for it I was really impressed. The, the quality is very good. And as long as you wait, that is still way too soft. That is nowhere near ready to come out of there yet. I mean, you could blow on it. Just be patient. Oh yeah, now we're getting stiff. We're starting to get stiff. All right, let's try cracking a little bit. It's probably a little too early. I usually wait a little bit longer. But let's see what happens. Uh, no, we're good. Both halves stayed on one side. Oop, oop. Because I pulled it out a little early. We have a little piece sticking on the top here. I'm trying not to warp it, but I also don't want to wait forever. There we go. Nice. If you just wait till it cools down all the way, you can just yank it out of here. Um, I'm impatient. I want to. I don't want you guys to have to wait around too long for me to finish this. There we go. So as you can see, you end up with a little bit of flashing. When I pushed it in and it oozed out those edges when I pushed it in, that's a good thing. You know you got a good solid joint. I actually prefer to have the flashing. And as you can see, two little snips and it's gone. There you go. Now you just take your little piece of sandpaper. Clean up the joint. It 
does not take much at all. And there you go. You have a nice, solid, clean... Oh, let me get you over here. There we go. It's interesting. This filament... Oh, this must... I think this is a matte PLA. I think this is a piece of matte PLA. But you now have a nice melt zone right there. Come on, autofocus. There we go. There we go. Now we got a nice clean shot. But there is your nice melt zone right there. You can see it's darker, almost like a dark green. That's where the red and the green plastic mix together. Now you want to be careful not to bend this too much because you this this is slightly compromised now. So you want to make sure that feeds nicely into the machine. This will go through the feeder. This will go through the Bowden tube. No problem. I have had no issues with this feeding. Um, the one thing you sometimes might have a problem with is if you pull too tight of an angle. So if your your filament and your feeder are real tight coming down into the feeder and it tries to bend that through the opening, it could break it. So um, all you have to do is pull some filament off the roll so that you know it can just pull that joint straight through the feeder instead of trying to bend it around the 90 degree corner. Uh, and again, it depends on the plastic you're using. Um, I've been very, very pleased. I've had zero issues with this. The joint has, let's see how strong this is. Oh yeah, we're good. Yeah, that ain't going nowhere. That is a proper meld. Okay, so assuming this is matte PLA, it blends fine with regular PLA. Um, I know PLA Plus does not blend, but it appears the matte PLA blends just fine. And diameter is good, tolerances are good. The, 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 the channel in here is very, very tight. So it's a very good fit to the PLA. Again, push in once it's nice and gooey. Push it until you get that little bleed out. You'll because you'll you'll see it'll you'll put, you'll be able to push the plastic in, and just snip off the flashing. Hit it with the sandpaper, and there you go. I now have a piece of two color filament that will go from red to green, or green to red, depending which way you put it in. I have been totally impressed with this. As long as you make sure not to mix your plastics, um, you won't have any problems. I've gotten good solid joints. As you can see, no problem feeding. And I dropped it on the floor. Uh, zero issues feeding. There we go. Turn down the light a little bit. Uh, I've been very happy with it. I am surprised. I was expecting it to be like artistic. I was expecting it to be like one of those things where, yeah, it technically works after you spend, you know, 50 attempts trying to get it to work just right. And No. I mean, the I, the first five joints I made, the first four worked. The fifth one only failed because it was PLA and PLA+. Plus. So far, every single joint of same for same, you know, make, as long as I'm using the same type of plastic, I've had a 100% success ratio. The only joints that have failed on me so far have been um, dissimilar materials. Beyond that, works great. The only one I have not tested is silk. I have not tried silk yet. Um, silk, you are definitely going to want to make sure you do, if, if it works at all, you are not going to want to remove it from this until it is completely cold. Because you ever have, you ever see silk ooze out of the nozzle and, you know, the, the silk comes out and then goes and turns into a big blob? Well, that's what will happen if you open this early. There's elastomers in the silk that cause it to want to become a sphere, to bubble up. Um, power supply seems to be a good quality. Inline switch works great. It has a light to tell you when it's on or off. Uh, the only thing it's missing is a, a temperature gauge would have been nice, but not the end of the world. You know, it's not the end of the world to not have a temperature gauge. Um, like I said, you know, like I said, mark it with a Sharpie so that you know where it is inside the unit. Um, you know, you give it the wiggle test. And when, when the plastic is cold, it'll twang. And as soon as the plastic reaches the melt point, You'll know it right away because you'll go to move the plastic here and it'll be like a wet noodle. You'll think you're tearing it off. It's just really soft. Um, but you'll feel like, oh crap, I'm going to tear it out of there. Nope, you're not. It's just really soft. Uh, once it gets soft, give it another 30 seconds 
At the end of the 30 seconds, do your push to make sure that melt zone is good and smushed together inside of there. Another 10 seconds, turn off the switch, start blowing on it, hang it in front of a fan, whatever you want to do, let it sit. Doesn't matter to me. But the nice thing is this grip is good enough and the tolerances are tight enough that as long as you wait until it's fully melted and wait until it's fully cooled, it's pretty much idiot proof. It's, it's, it's relatively error proof. Um, I was surprised by that. I, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be more problematic. But overall, I give this a huge thumbs up. I, I just love being able to do this. <laughs> I love being able to you know, save all these scraps. And as long as you test the end, make sure it's not brittle. And of course, after you test it, cut off the part you tested because you just broke it when you tested it. Okay? Just leave it curled up. Okay? Put it in a bag with some desiccant so it doesn't absorb any moisture. You might want to um, dry it if you're going to hold on to it for a while, like I'm going to. Like this here, I'm not going to use. I'm going to add the next piece to this, and then the next piece to this, and then the next piece to this. And I'm going to keep adding pieces to this. You know, carefully make sure you're not tangled. When you're ready to add your next piece, you know, make sure you're all nice and untangled. Add your next piece. Um, make sure you, you you know put a little clothespin on the ends or a piece of tape on the ends to keep them from tangling up. And what I'll do is I'll just keep adding pieces to this. And when I have, you know, 100, 150 grams of plastic, you know, enough to make a print, like this is 20 grams, um, I'll just make up some more generic around-the-house parts that I need for stuff. And who cares if it's multicolor? <laughs> you know, this is holding batteries. I don't care if it's in different colors. That's fine by me. I'm happy. This is cool. This is really, really cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day. Let me know how the audio turned out, if it's better or different or how you like it, how you don't like it, whatever. Um, I got that mic on Amazon for like 27 bucks, And I'm also hoping it'll be less problematic with OBS. So maybe we'll stop having the lost audio problem during streams. Hopefully we'll be back next week with a stream. And we'll see how well it works during the live stream. Because I don't know if the problem is Windows, OBS, or the camera. Um, if it's Windows, this might not fix it. If it's OBS, I don't think it's OBS. OBS always says the audio is fine even when it's not fine. So I don't think it's OBS. I think it's either the camera or it's Windows, and I suspect it's Windows. Um, maybe it's driver related. Maybe this uses a different driver and it won't have this problem. Mm, we'll see. I don't know. So we'll find out. But either way, let me know what you think of the audio quality. Let me know what you think of this. I'm very pleased with it. I, I, I This one's not sent to me. I paid for this. It was expensive. You know, for me, it was expensive at $53. I am thrilled having it. Worth the money. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's already paid for. <laughs> Unless this thing fails before I do a few kilograms, which I don't think so. It's just a heating element. I, I don't see what could fail. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep on adding little bits to this until I have enough to make something and then crank away. Print another one of those. <laughs> you guys have a great day. Thank you for joining in.